When it comes to the four champions from Breath of the Wild, we all probably have very similar basic outlooks on them, at least at a surface level. Urbosa is the fierce Garuda warrior, Daruk is the big lovable Goron, Mifa is the sweet Zora, and Rivali is the arrogant Rito. Naturally, once delving further, we each come to our own conclusions concerning our differing opinions of them and thus have our own favorites. Perhaps you admired Rivali for his hard work and didn't mind his overzealous, selfish pride. Or just love that he used the word asinine. Maybe you didn't find Mifa to be all that sweet, but rather somewhat annoying and obvious in her affections for Link. I don't know, I can't speak for you. However, going back to the surface level appearance, I find it interesting that the music backing each of the champions lies in stark contrast to what we think would be fitting for them. Hey y'all, I'm the Geek Apprentice and welcome to the Geekdom. If this is your first time here, I hope you enjoy the video and consider checking out my other content on a myriad of geeky topics. When it comes to Breath of the Wild, I've been on a big music kick with this specific Zelda game as of late. Check out my video with Capt Burgerson to get a whiff of that. And some of the pieces I keep returning to are the themes for each of the champions. I have found that the musicality and vibe of each of these themes does not really match their respective champion, at least not in the way one would initially imagine. So today I want to dive deeper into these scores and discuss what is different about them and what they tell us about each of these champions. How the composition of each of the champions themes reveals a more concrete and deeper part of them that might not always show during a first impression. However, as Zelda fans well know, it is dangerous to go alone. Thus today, I will be discussing these themes with the rest of the High End Gamescast podcast crew, Chublima, Capt Burgerson and Game Over Jesse. If you don't know about this podcast, you're seriously missing out. The four of us will discuss theories, rumors, Nintendo news, and just overall have a good time. You can download the podcast on iTunes or go check out the YouTube videos on Game Over Jesse's channel. He's the one that, you know, kind of started the whole thing. One thing that has come up a few times during our podcast is how each of us sort of matches up to a champion from Breath of the Wild. Chublima as Urbosa, Capt Burgerson as Rivali, Jesse as Daruk, and me as Mifa. While obviously these are not perfect matches, there are massive discrepancies for each of these lineups, if you will, it's still kind of cool how easy it was to just divvy us up into those characters. In fact, a fan of the podcast, super talented artist, created this artwork of all of us as those champions. It's it's so cool. Hence, I felt it was fitting to request their help in discussing each of these pieces of music and I am so thankful to have them here. They are all also content creators via YouTube and or Twitch, so links to their creations will be in the description below. Quick note, I would be remiss in failing to acknowledge that yes, each of these pieces of music does double as scene music, matching the atmosphere and flow of that particular scene. That scene being what happens after we set the Divine Beast free and thus set the spirits of each champion free. However, that doesn't change the fact that each of these is unique to the champion themselves and are thus dictated by the personality and depth of each character. All right, without further ado, let's dive deeper into the music behind the champions. Ravali, the champion of the Rito. He's a bit pompous, haughty, prideful, kind of a jerk, arrogant, and well, pretty rude sometimes. Yet he may also be the most defended and equally polarizing of the champions as well. This contrast is for good reason. While Rivali certainly carries all of the aforementioned traits quite strongly, he is anything but shallow. And we know this because of the inside look we get in the Champions Ballad DLC. Princess Zelda interrupts him as he's training and working on his soon-to-be-dubbed Rivali Scale. What we the player realize in this scene is that Rivali is, as far as we can tell, the only one of the champions whose gift was not inherent. He was not born with it. It was not something he just needed a little bit of training to smooth the edges on. Rather, he had to work excruciatingly hard to create this special skill. Meaning he had to fall over and over and over again, failing probably more times than he can count before mastering this special technique. Even if you don't like him, understandably, 
due to his rude and abrasive nature, you can't help but respect him. While the other champions are, thankfully, quite humble about their gifts, Rivali did have to earn his talent through hard work. Perhaps this provides insight as to why he acts the way he does towards those such as Link, whose gifts seem to come without breaking a sweat. Yes, we know Link works diligently to keep himself and his skills strong, but you get what I'm saying. Certainly not justifying someone being arrogant or rude, but the clarity offered to us in the DLC brings his character arc much further. Fittingly, of all the themes for the Champions of Breath of the Wild, the one accompanying the scene where Rivali's spirit is released from Va Meadow is arguably the one that stands in the sharpest contrast to the character himself. His score is not grand, loud, nor proud. It's actually incredibly humble and simple sounding. There are perhaps a few measures that grow, but those actually just sound like the Rito Village daytime theme, which is fitting since, you know, he's a Rito. The musicality of Ravali's theme is down-to-earth and almost regretful sounding at times. The down-to-earth part of it speaks to his growth and respect for Link, as much as he doesn't want to admit it. But the fact that he gives his painfully earned skill to Link speaks volumes. The mournful sounds reflect the regret he perhaps feels due to seemingly being snubbed of a glory he believes he deserves. Moreover, that even after all that training he did, Windblight Ganon was too much for him, perhaps showing him that Link is the best choice to face Calamity Ganon. Talk about humble pie. Rivali definitely craves attention, popularity, and glory, but at least he worked hard for it and never used another or wronged another person in order to climb up in his status. Gotta at least give him that. It's just so satisfying to hear such a humble theme against a character who is, on the surface, not so humble. I can't help but believe this was intentional on the part of the composers, done in a way to make us question why such a prideful character would warrant such a simple, lowly theme. There's clearly more to him, certain pangs and longings we may never know about. That contrast and mystery makes this possibly the strongest of the champion themes. Arbosa is cool, that much is obvious. If you don't like her, you're wrong. Just kidding. But she's truly a fierce warrior. Strong as well as independent. You know, all the things Hollywood tries to implement into female characters today, except leave it to a video game like Breath of the Wild to actually do it tastefully and beautifully. This may very well be because her character depth doesn't end there. She also has a deep kindness and warmth that one could describe as motherly. This is exemplified in the memory scene where Zelda is asleep on Arbosa's shoulder. Arbosa was close friends with the princess's mother. They were both leaders and probably shared similar duties and concerns, not to mention if Zelda is any reflection of her mother, Arbosa and the former queen definitely would have gotten along well. Thus, it is fitting that following her dear friend's sudden passing, she would make it her duty to help care for Zelda where she could, and provide her with a good feminine role model to be inspired by and look up to. In many ways, Arbosa fulfills the much needed role of a mother figure for the young princess, and this ought to not be overlooked. When we set Arbosa's spirit free after defeating Thunderblight Ganon and Fadden Boris, the music we are treated to during this scene echoes all of those deeper qualities of this Gerudo tribe leader. The score delights our ears with those classic Gerudo Valley night vibes, and it is in that calmer night theme we hear a melody which speaks to Arbosa's warmth and gentleness. We all know she can kick butt. We all know how awesome her strength is both inside and out. We all know what an incredible leader she was in life. Therefore, it would be redundant to force the track backing our encounter with her to reflect the obvious. Instead, the composers for Breath of the Wild wrote her a piece of music which reminds us that when you look beyond her warrior status, you find an incredibly kind, nurturing, warm, and for Princess Zelda, a motherly woman. Urbosa is one of the most well-rounded characters in the Zelda franchise, and this piece of music matches her well. I believe that it's safe to say, among most fans of Breath of the Wild, Mifa is considered the darling sweetheart of the champions. 
And no, I'm not here to theorize that she's actually some intense rebel with a cause and that you can hear it in her musical theme. In fact, I'm glad she's not. Unfortunately, someone being overtly sweet and gentle gives them a reputation of being innocent, which really just translates to naive and stupid. Believe me, I would know it's one of my biggest pet peeves to be called innocent. It's a massive insult to Mifa's inner strength that simply because her outward personality doesn't meet the societal requirements for strong, that she is therefore meek. If you've played the Champions Ballad DLC, then you've gotten a nice glimpse into her brand of strength. Beyond the fact that she looks so stinking cool when she does her Tony Hawk style stuff down the waterfall, she is holding in so much fear and anxiety. She seems to know that her role in saving the life of Hyrule might cut her own life short, leave her little brother Sidon without her motherly-like guidance, seriously grieve her father, break the hearts of the entire Zora domain, and end any chance she has to spend more time with those whom she loves. Those fears are real, and I imagine they cut deep, but she doesn't show it. Rather, she channels it all in a way that keeps her head on straight, she remains calm in the face of adversity. She knows what she is doing is bigger than her fears. The task at hand must remain her primary focus. And people pass her off as just the sweetie with a crush on Link. <laughs> if you give her musical theme a good listen, I believe you can hear the aforementioned qualities, all of them. On the surface, the melody and instrumentation is considerably gentle and sweet. And it would be natural to hone in on that considering she is seeing Link for the first time in a century. However, given the choice of chords used in this theme with dissonant sounds, it echoes something sadder. Loss, regret, pain, sorrow, longing. What Mifa most feared would happen came to be, and thus she was trapped inside Varuta for over 100 years. Gentle does not mean weak, but when someone is as kind and sweet as Mifa, those kinds of sorrows cut in a way no one else can understand. Everything she probably had dreamt up for her life was gone in an instant with the surge of Water Blight Ganon and she could do nothing. Still, there is a hopeful sound sprinkled throughout her theme here. She knows she did the right thing. She knows Hyrule will be saved and that people will move on. As painful as everything is, as much as she still probably longs for what could have been, her hope that life will turn out better is a kind of strength we all sorely need at some point or another. The only thing stronger than fear is hope, and Mifa's theme exudes this element, reflecting her calm strength that will probably forever be passed off as merely innocent. At first glance, one might think, what is there to say about Daruk and his theme? I get it. He seems like the perfect stereotype for a Goron. Big, goofy, strong, and likes to have a good time. And certainly, the very beginning of his music reflects that. However, while that may be the stereotype of Gorons in general, it's not how the most well-known Goron leaders are. Think about it, Darunia from Ocarina of Time, Darmani from Majora's Mask, and most of the Gorons from Twilight Princess all had more stoic nature to them. They were serious about their position as leaders. Unless you play Saria's theme for them, then at least Darunia will have a dance party. But Daruk from Breath of the Wild? No doubt he does take his role seriously, but his personality is far more relaxed and just overall fun. Yes, when he needs to, he gets down to business and is ready to take on Ganon without question. It's just an interesting take on a Goron leader that we haven't really seen in a 3D Zelda game until now. As for this theme, well, this could throw anyone off. After you've finished Fireblight Ganon, Daruk's spirit is free and Va Rudonia is back under his control. The scene music, Daruk's theme, begins playing. As mentioned earlier, the very start of it sounds just like the fun-loving Daruk we know, but then it changes. After the initial greeting of the song, 
there is a pause and the music turns gentle and somber. After a few more measures, we are given another pause. The music following this second pause turns serious. Very serious. Daruk's theme is actually the most dark sounding in nature compared to the other champion's themes. And that is truly saying something, considering Daruk is probably the last one we'd think of to give a foreboding theme to. Surely Rivali's forced humility, Mipha's shattered dreams, or Arbosa's broken motherly heart for Zelda would warrant this seriousness more. But no, their themes did exactly what they needed to do for them, to reveal their true character and deeper meanings. But that leaves us asking, why go this dark for Daruk at all? Because he's focused. He always was, as the leader of the Gorons, like all preceding him, but it's different now. His fun nature was a source of optimism for others in his life, but now all bets are off. With the death of himself and the other four champions, the situation has turned dire, and Daruk's trait of being focused now must take the will 100%. You could almost say that this theme hints at the idea that he is angry and is trying to channel that hatred for Ganon into a positive force, just not in a way he's usually done. Rest assured though, he is ready to finish the job and set the princess and all of Hyrule free. The seriousness of Daruk's theme, though seemingly in conflict with his boisterous, happy character, plays to show that Daruk is not one to be trifled with. He may be a fun dude, but he's focused, especially when it comes to his people and his land, which he cares for deeply. What an epic theme for an underrated character. Each of these pieces of music goes beyond just matching the first impressions of these champions, but takes us beyond that and into a more subtle, vulnerable, and beautiful aspect of these well-rounded characters. I hope this video has given you some insight into that brilliance on the part of the composers for Breath of the Wild. Once again, a massive thank you to Game Over Jesse, Capt Ferguson, and Chublima for joining me on this video. It's actually thanks to Jesse and his channel that I even had a start on YouTube at all. I mean, what started out as me winning a little contest to have my voice featured in one video turned into becoming a reoccurring person and joining the podcast and thus the Highland Games cast. It's it, it's crazy how those things happen, and I am to this day so forever grateful. Y'all, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the Geekdom and checking out some of my other content. As stated previously, check the description below for links to the creations of those featured in this video. And of course, massive thank you to all of my patrons such as Joking Batman, Lurillion Sheep, Ryan Kirkland, Ryan Harvey, Cheap Seats, Sushi Bandit, and many, many others. Y'all are just so amazing and I'm so grateful for your support. If you'd like to get in on the action and receive some of what I believe to be pretty cool rewards, just check out patreon.com slash thegeekapprentice. But anyway, that is all for today. Thank you for watching.